Okay, so welcome to the webinar today. Um, today what we're going to do, and I like to do these, I've been doing these practice with me sessions, and what I'm hoping to do, I've been doing them the last couple of months, and what I'm hoping to do with my basic members here in the next few months is do this more on a weekly basis. So you're getting a little bit more um, practice, live help, and have more of an opportunity to work with me or one of our trainers. Because, um, because with the basic membership, as you know, that you have all access to all the videos and all the lessons and things, and I want, I want you to have more access to um, kind of live feedback because I think that will help you as you go through the course. So for right now, we're doing this every month, these webinars, but um, I'm hoping here in the near future we can increase those um, to once a week so you can get a little bit more help um, in these group settings. And one thing that I've noticed is that as we've been doing these practice with me sessions, um, it's been nice because the students have been able to not only get help from me and from our trainers, but get help from each other. Um, as you're asking questions and I'm answering those questions for you, then it, um, it really does help you learn from each other. Okay, so let me go through a little bit first, just an uh, introduction for those who are new and haven't come to these webinars before. My name is Annie Rudin. That's me and my husband and my three little boys. Um, I am a speech language pathologist, and so that's where my training comes in. Um, I, uh, and what that is, is it's, uh, I have a master's degree in communication sciences and disorders, and um, accent training is quite a little niche to speech therapy. Not a lot of speech therapists do it because it's not considered, it's it's more considered just um, um, kind of education and, um, and training and not necessarily therapy. So, but I jumped into this probably six years ago and I have absolutely loved it and have um, just completely dedicated my my career to it because I love it so much and the the best part about this is the people that I get to work with and so um, it's it's fun for me to be able to have these webinars and be able to interact with my students and get um, that direct contact so I do a lot of live trainings um, do during the week and that gives me a really good feel for how my students are going through the course what questions they have and um, and what areas they need a little help on. And actually, the what we'll be focusing most on today is something that has been coming up in my live lessons that I'm thinking, okay, my students need a little more, a little more exposure to this. And for those who are going through the video course and maybe are just on that basic, basic membership or plus membership where they don't get live interaction with me um, or live feedback with me, um, I hope to bring kind of uh, what I'm learning with my live clients to you and help you um, help you learn and um, learn and grow as as my uh, along with my live clients. OK, so what we have. Uh, so I, I um, I'm a, a certified member of the American Speech Language Hearing Association, which is our national certification um, for speech pathologists. And I'm also a mom. So these are my three little munchkins. Um, they are uh, Andrew's in first grade, Jimmy's a, a preschooler, just started preschool, and Luke is my little one-year-old. So they keep me busy when I'm not um, not working with my my clients. I'm working with the, them, and and they're a lot of fun. All right. So one thing that I'm really excited to excited about is our Facebook group page for our Pronunciation Pro students. So um, I sent out an email um, this morning uh, with the link to join that Facebook group. And I hope you, and I've, I've seen already that there are quite a few people that, few of the students who have requested to join. So I will be, um, I will be uh, adding those who are current members of Pronunciation Pro, um, the website and our Pronunciation Pro program. And what I'm, what I want that to be is just a chance, a place for us to, um, to interact, and to ask for students to ask questions, and myself and my trainers can can answer questions, and um, and that you can learn from each other as well. Because something that has been nice about these webinars is that you 
<clears throat> you learn from each other. When you're asking, when different students are asking questions, then you can learn from the answers that are given. Um, so you might not even know which questions to ask, but other students, as other students are asking questions and um, getting feedback and getting their, their questions answered, it helps you learn. So I hope that you can join that group. Go ahead and join that group and I'll, um, I'll add you um, and, and we'll start learning together and use that platform to, um, to kind of work together. All right. Okay, so this one is a, a practice with me session. And um, so a few of you have uh, sent in your questions. I'm, I might skip over this first one. So Lena um, wanted to go over our blends, but she, uh, but she doesn't seem to be here right now. And one of the biggest thing is she, she had sent me a list of words that she was struggling with and she wasn't quite sure how she was getting those R's. And so I wanted to hear her because a lot of it has to do with hearing it and making sure, you know, and then being able to identify where your mouth position is and everything. So if you have questions like that, um, email me those and that this this webinar is a great, um, great platform to do that. So I'll wait and see if she joins a little bit later um, and then we can answer those questions. Um, and actually, Kento, I'm going to go ahead and address your question. I got his um his question just this morning, and what he what he was asking, and let me even just pull up that that um, email, was about um, says I'm struggling to figure out how native native speakers have decent rhythm when they're speaking, which I can't point out. Uh, would you teach us to learn the rhythm effectively to sound more like native speakers? Okay, so Kento, um, go ahead and write in the question box. I wanna, which, uh, which week are you in? What week of the program are you in? Because that makes a big difference in kind of how I answer this question. Third week, okay. So when you went over the week one, um, so in week one, you went over the introduction and in that introduction, we talk about what an accent is. Okay, so so what an accent is, is we have, it's the carryover of the sounds and rhythm of your first language to your second language. Okay, so when we talk about, um, and I'm gonna pull this up here so I can write some notes. When we're talking about the rhythm of English, what we're talking about is bringing a few, several different skill sets in to, and actually, let me pull. So what we're doing is we're, we're bringing in the sounds of English. So this is on that worksheet that comes with the introduction video. We're bringing the sounds of English and the rhythm of English together. So if you're not saying the sounds of English correctly, then you're going to have that, you know, that accent. But if, but it also is that rhythm of English. So when you're talking about the rhythm of English, what we're talking about is word stress, sentence stress, intonation, linking, and pausing. So you are in third week, so you are just getting into word stress. Okay, so what happens is as you go through the course, first you look talk about word stress. So word stress is knowing which syllable to stress in the word. So for example, um, um, you know, I'm going to a meeting, meeting. Meeting is first syllable stress meeting. I'm not saying I'm going to a meeting, meeting. I'm going to a meeting. Okay. There's certain words that we make sure, um, that we make sure are on there or make sure that we're stressing correctly. And then the next week you're going to get into sentence stress and sentence stress talks about, okay, now that we know which, which syllable in the word to stress, how, what, what, words in a sentence are we supposed to stress and how does that work? Um, and one thing is that the lessons go over a lot of the basic rules of sentence stress. I've also do, done um, some other webinars that go into more of the, the motion of sentence stress. So even the, the latest webinar on the website talks about sentence stress and how to use emotion in sentence stress. So um, this, these word stress and sentence stress, and then you get into intonation and linking, all of these areas, when you pull them all together, that's what creates that rhythm that, native, that makes you sound more like a native speaker. 
Okay, so you have to learn. So, so Kento, you're in the third week. So you're just barely getting into the rhythm lessons. So, so as you go through the week three, you'll learn word stress. Four, you'll re- learn sentence stress, intonation. And then, you know, by week six, you'll have all of this, all of the lessons on the rhythm of English. And then as you, um, as you continue on, so after week six and seven, it's just reviewing and getting all of those to work together. Okay. So as you're, as you're going through the course, you're going to learn all these different rules and understand everything about this rhythm that makes that, that is making is what makes native English speakers sound native (laughs) and how you can sound more like a native speaker. So that's, that's the system. That's kind of the program. So, so when you ask, you know, I'm trying to figure out how native speakers have that rhythm. Well, you're in the right place because (laughs) that's exactly what we're teaching here, but it does, it does happen step by step. You have to learn one piece at a time and then, and then you start kind of pulling it together and how can I work this together to make sure that I'm using that stress and those, those elements, elements together um, so that we can we can learn that. So what I'm going to do, Kento, I'm going to pull up. Let me think. You're in you're in word stress right now. Um, I'm actually going to unmute you for a minute. So Kento, you there? Yep. Okay. So did that make sense? Did, is that yeah. is that what you were looking for when you were asking yeah. about the rhythm? Exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Because it sounds like, so tell me, um, are you living in the United States? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. And how long have you been here? Oh, uh, it's my third year. Okay. Third year. And, and uh, did you have a lot of exposure to English when you're, before you moved to the U.S.? No. Really? Okay. Um, because just in, I mean, I've only heard a few words here, but, um, so tell me, uh, Tell me a little bit about yourself. I just want to kind of hear hear a little bit from you. So I'm I'm a college student in uh, Pennsylvania right now. Mm-hmm. And I'm junior so far. Okay. And I'm learning behavior economics. Okay. Mm. Uh, <laughs> okay. Well, that's good. Okay. Sorry. So you you're at, at a very high level of uh, in your your um, English pronunciation and your rhythm. Like I'm, okay. I'm pretty impressed. Um, okay. So what will be really nice for you is as you go through this course, um, you'll learn why native speakers do what they're doing, <laughs> mm. and and actually it'll probably help you help you be like, okay, I get that, I understand that, um, or that's new to me, and I can start using that skill. Um, so I think that this will be a good one for you, and you you're you are at a high, very high level, and I. I um, I'm pretty impressed at how well you've been able to do just being here for three years. So, Thank you. Um, so that's pretty great. So, um, good job with that, and and uh, just keep keep on moving forward because I think that the the rhythm will really come along as you you learn to understand what makes what makes English rhythm. <laughs> Thank you very much. All right, great. Okay, so let's see. Um, I'm gonna mute there. Uh, Alina. Yes. Hi. Are you, so so I'm I'm thinking so you're you're the one that we've been I've been um, emailing with, right? Yes, I do. I am. Okay, yes. with the R questions or with the the linking questions. So it's uh, R questions, right? Is this R? Yeah. Okay, R. Okay, so I've been I had I had you on here and I want you to um, I wanted to hear from you a little bit, okay? Okay. okay, so Lena, what, just to kind of let the other students know, Lena had, um, had um, emailed me about questions about um, her R and not, not knowing exactly how to get that R, more in R blend. So she was asking about consonant, um, words that have the consonant and then the R sound um, right next to it and wasn't quite sure how to do it. And I wanted to hear Lena and see what... Um, what she was she was referring to. So go ahead um, and read through some of these words for me, will you? Okay. Uh, I don't know if, uh, so uh, like if it's uh, um, like right, I would like can pronounce, but the uh, words like try, it's like very strong. Try yeah. Or I just 
cannot pronounce the both except try for us pray pretty uh, primates pretty produce travel drag re strong drinking dramatic free Okay, good. Okay, so so I, I hear what you're talking about. It's more of a rolled R and you're having a hard time kind of controlling that tongue and keeping it down. Is that? Yes, or I cannot pronounce it all. Like, I can like, you cannot hear. Mm -hmm. So say a few, say a few words for me that start with R. So like rain. Um, rain, right. Re um, really, really wrong. Yeah. Okay. So you're getting that smooth R there. So do this for me. I want you to start. Um, I, I want you to say these sounds, but or say these words, but do it very slowly for me. Okay. So we're going to go, we're going to do try, but you're going to do try. Try. There you go. Do you hear how that just smoothed that R? Do that again. Try. Mm hmm. Okay, do the next one. Pray. Yep. Okay, so, so, so then, so what, ha what you need to do is when you slow it down, that's why, this is why at the very first week of this program, I say you got to slow down <laughs> is because um, you're training your, your tongue to move in that new way. And so what it has to do is it, it, you have to give it time to get into position. Okay, so if you just try and say try, pray, oh, I'm not getting it, what you have to do, and this goes for any sound that you're working on or anything, if it's just your tongue's just not getting into position, always slow it down, you know, slow it way down, and then so what you do is uh, say that again, so say try, try. Uh -huh. and then what you do is just kind of try and get faster and faster, okay, so you go try, try, try it you know and just repeat it several times and try and get that um continue to keep that smooth so say that for me again try try but i feel like then you cannot hear uh first like it's like, like completely yeah and yeah <laughs> So here's here's something that happens um, is what we call an unaspirated T or P. And this is probably what you um, are experiencing is that that T, you kind of feel like it needs to have a, a burst of air. T -t, right. So what happens is that it, it really just kind of releases into that R. Try, try, try. So um, the way that it's pronounced, so I am trying to say the word try, right? I am trying. Um, so you're releasing that, but try, try. It's going into the R. So go ahead and say, say that for me. I am trying. Uh, I'm trying, right. but then it's like ch, 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 okay. Yeah, and that actually happens. Travel, ch, ch, travel, truck, tree. Yeah. It, it does end up sounding more like a ch, ch sound, like that ch sound, right? Yes. Uh, how about pray? Then it's completely not. Okay, so let's do pray. Do pray really slowly for me. Pray. That sounds perfect to me. Yeah. Okay, do predict. Uh, pre predict. Oh, yeah. Pre predict. Yeah. Do primates. Yeah, that R is nice and smooth. That sounds great. Do the next one. Mm-hmm. And then. Yep, you got it. So that first time around, you were just kind of rolling that R, but now you're smoothing it out and you're able to get that. So it's a matter of practicing it and getting that repetition so that you can keep that tongue down and keep it smooth. Okay, do this one for me. This one's a little bit different because it's an STR. So do strong. Strong. Yeah, that sounds great. How about these three? Um, drinking. Okay, slow that one down. Drinking. Drinking. There you go. Next one. Dramatic. Okay, slow that one down a little bit more. Dramatic. Dramatic. 
dra, dra, and it kind of j, j, it kind of gets that j, j sound, that the D, G, j, j, drinking. There you go. So yeah, dr dr kind of turns in the j j sound, and that's actually a good thing to note. I'm gonna make a little note of that to to um, remind students about that. That it does become the tr does kind of become that chr sound, and then dr does become that dgr sound. Okay, that's good. I love it because I I learn from my students as I'm going through these questions and learning learning what you're struggling with. It helps me identify what I need, to, how I can better teach you. So this is this is what I love about these things. Okay, so did that seem to answer your question? So what hap um Okay, so what what you want to do now, and this happens, and this is for everyone, as you're going through a specific sound that's difficult for you, um, don't expect yourself to be like, okay, I got it for I got it in a, when I was saying a word. Now I should say it in conversation all the time. Correct. OK, that's not how it, that's not how it goes. Um, what happens and this is why the course is set up this way is that you have to you have to learn it in a very structured situation, like in words and sentences and a paragraph. And you have to learn how to get it correct and get it feeling more comfortable and natural for you while you're reading and while you're co really concentrating on it. And then once it's more natural for you, then you can start moving it into conversation. And I, I'm not going to stop you from trying to use it in conversation before it's completely natural in um, or completely comfortable in your readings. But don't expect to don't expect that at the beginning. So that's why it's set up. The course is set up for the six first six or seven six, six and seven weeks to be learning the new sounds, learning the new rhythm learning all these things and then the second half of the program is really learning to bring it all together so that you can then move it into conversational speech okay it does take a lot of repetition it, it does take a lot of practice but it it, it works <laughs> okay all right good i'm um, thank you for your question that's good to um good to be able to hear that okay so let let me go into let me go into the next um, slide here. This is the next question. Here, let me move past here. And if you, any of you who are here on the call, if you want, you have any questions that you just thought of, please ask them. Otherwise, I'm going to go through some of these questions that were emailed to me. Okay, so Vicki was talking, was asking about linking, and what she said was. Um, I have a question on no uh, no ending sound. So when to say the ending sound and when not to. So she says, um, I like that native English native speakers usually skip the K sound in like. So I like that. I like that. So it's not like it's not I like that. You know I like that. It's more I like that. And then she she also says um, with the word what what. There's no, it's not what, so there's no T sound there. Um, I found that thing, this, the D sound isn't pronounced. Um, it grows directly into that TH sound. Okay, so she's asking, what's the general rule for this? Um, I'm not sure when to skip it or, or pronounce the ending sound. Okay, this is a wonderful question and exactly at the right time because as I was working with my, as I've been working with my students, this week, my live students, um, I have um, been thinking about the same thing because at the beginning of our course, and I don't know what, um, you know, you mentioned some of you are just finishing week one, week three, and um, some other a little further along, but what happens is in the way the course is set up is the first, the sec first week you learn about final consonants, okay, final consonants, and and what I like to do with final consonants, and I'm going to go into um, some of the exercises that I do, is that with the final voice consonant, what we want to make sure is that there's a difference between those voiced and voiceless sounds um, of English, and that there's a clear difference between the voiced and voiceless sounds. So when I'm going through it with my students, um, this is this is kind of the progression that I do. I I 
have them pronounce these sounds and I have them overemphasize it. So I have them hold that vowel longer before the voice consonant and I have them really exaggerate the ending sound. Okay, and and so when I'm going through them, I'm saying, okay, cub, sorry, cup, cub, nap, nab. And this is only for those who have, are, have the tendency of dropping the ending sounds of their words, or if they're always saying a voiceless sound instead of a voiced sound. So like if, a, if I hear someone saying cup, cup, you know, for these first ones and that it doesn't sound, I don't hear a, a distinct difference between those two words, then I make them overemphasize that voiced ending. So I make them say the baby cub held the cup. Okay, so I'm not going to, I'm not, the goal here is not for you to walk at, around and say, hey, look at that cub. <laughs> you know, you don't want, you don't want to be um, speaking like that. It's not natural. It's not something that you want to do. But here at the beginning of the course, I want my students to get comfortable with that voiced and voiceless contrast. And the only way to do that is to engage your, your voice on that and make sure you're getting that voiced ending. So what I've found is that if I really emphasize that, that, um, that ending sound at first, it helps them really get comfortable with voiced and voiceless sounds. Um, it helps them bring their awareness to the ending sounds and things. And then what we do is we jump, we get later on in the course, we get into linking. And I've actually played around with whether I need to move this close, uh, sooner in the program, but it's actually in week six. And so what we're going to do today is I'm going to go into week six and I'm going to show you um, with that linking um, then what to do to get uh, to answer um, Vicky's question in terms of when do I say it and when do I don't. Um, so let's get into linking. So obviously native English speakers are not going to walk around um, and say, you know, for example, my bed is tall. My bed is tall. Now we're not going to talk like that. It's, you know, there's there's this fluid motion um, that needs to happen from one word to the next. Um, so what we have to do is once I can get my clients to get that ending sound on the word, then I start talking about linking, okay? So what I'd want them to do is if that D sound, their tendency is saying, my bet is tall, my bet is tall, then I say, okay, first we gotta make sure you get the your mouth in the right position for the D sound, my bed is tall, and then I'm going to teach you how to connect it. My bed is tall, my bed is tall. And for some, it, when we talk about linking earlier, then it helps them get, get that ending sound um, easier. Because when, when, when the ending sound just links right into the next word, then it might be easier to pronounce that ending sound. So for example, let's go into, let's go into some of these connections. Um, so if you haven't gotten to the linking and pausing lesson, Basically, what it's saying is we want, our, we want our words to flow from one word to the next, but there are certain rules that we have to follow to make sure that that happens. Um, sometimes these happen very naturally for you, um, and sometimes, if you, especially if you're dropping ending sounds, if you're, you're, your tendency is to drop ending sounds, then um, you have to really practice this. Okay, so there are three different ways to link words together. So um, when one word ends in a consonant and the next word in, starts with a vowel, then we have consonant to vowel connections. If one word ends in a vowel and the next word begins with a vowel, we have vowel to vowel um, connection. And then the third one is consonant to consonant. Okay, what we're going to talk about today is that consonant to consonant because the, the consonant to vowel tends to be a little bit easier. As you go through the linking lesson, you'll probably find that that's something that might, you know, be a lot easier. Vowel to vowel tends to be a little bit easier. 
Um, but consonant and co to consonant is really what Vicky was talking about. So what it means is when one word begins, um, one word ends in a consonant, the next word begins with a consonant, then we have to figure out how to pronounce those. Do we pronounce the full, full sound or is there some dropping of sounds? What exactly happens? So here are the rules and here's what you need to do. Um, there's two parts to this. The first is, part A, is when one word ends with the same sound as the next word begins with, then we say that sound just once. Okay, we're just going to say that sound once. So in this situation, I want to come. I'm not saying I want to come. I want to come. No, I'm just going to say that T once. I want to come. I want to come. So if you're, as you're listening along with this, I want you to say that, say that and make sure that you're getting that connection. I want to come. Um, same here, it doesn't always have to be spelled with the same letter, but if it gives the same sound, so enough food, enough food. I, he's had enough food. Okay, same with here, some more. That E is silent, so we're really just getting ending with that M sound, beginning with the M sound. Um, all right, so all of these, when one word ends in the same sound as the next word, just connect it with one sound. You don't have to repeat that sound. Here's where it gets tricky. This is part B, okay, B of linking, consonant to consonant. When one word begins in a consonant sound and the next word begins with a consonant sound produced in the same position, then they share their pronunciation. So let me explain this a little bit. So, so there's different positions that consonants can be in. There's lips, so kind of uh, saying these, say these sounds, so those are all produced in the lips. So those, those, that's where the movement happens. Behind the teeth sounds, there's a little ridge behind your front teeth, and those sounds are produced there, um, there behind your your teeth. So t, ch, s, sh, d, j, z, j, n. Mm. All of those have your tongue touching that spot in some way. And then there's throat sounds, k, h, g, ng, er, that are produced in the back of the throat. Okay, so we have these three different positions that we are, um, that we are producing sounds. So, going back to the explanation, when a uh, one word, one word ends in a consonant sound and the next one begins with a consonant sound produced in the same position, then they share that pronunciation. So if they're produced in the same position, then they're gonna be shared. So what that looks like or what that sounds like is, okay, so right here we have two um, lip sounds. I've been, I've been. So you move, you move from one to the next been drinking, been drinking. So I'm getting my mouth in that N position, been drinking, but I don't necessarily release that first sound. I just lead right into the next one, been drinking, been drinking. I can't say be drinking, be drinking, and drop that N sound. I have to get my tongue in the position of that sound before I move into the next. And then drinking coffee, drinking coffee. So I have that G ing sound and then the K sound in the back of my throat. Drinking coffee. So I'm not really releasing drinking, drinking. I'm just move, I'm releasing it into the next sound. Drinking coffee. So here's where Pete didn't. That T and the D are very, they, they are really good at sharing. <laughs> that T and the D sound. So when one word ends in a T sound or a D sound and the next word begins with a T or a D sound, then they really share that sound. So when we're saying Pete didn't, Pete didn't, I'm really not releasing that T sound, I'm just leading right into this D sound. Okay, Pete didn't. I'm not, I still have to put my tongue in the position of the T sound, but I don't release it. I don't go Pete, didn't, 
I just say Pete didn't, which is different than P didn't, P didn't. I'm doing Pete didn't, Pete didn't. Okay, so that gets a little tricky. So that's why I want, is there anybody that's interested in volunteering to kind of practice this? Um, if you are, kind of put that hand up if you want to try these and just kind of show um, what these connections need to be. Anyone brave enough? <laughs> I might nominate you. Okay, there you go. Lena, let's, let's, have, you, let's have you do this. Okay, so, um, so do that number two for me. Pete didn't. Pete didn't share his treat. Okay, so we're going to link that a little bit more here. So, Pete didn't. Pete didn't. Pete didn't. Yes, exactly. Okay, then didn't share. Didn't share. Exactly. Good. I liked how there was just no break between that. So, uh, his treat. His treat. Treat. Mm -hmm. So, there's that TR, yeah? His yeah. treat. Read. Good. Good. So then connect that whole word, that whole sentence together, and get it nice and fluid. Pete didn't share his treat. Pete didn't share his treat. His treat. Yeah. So a little bit more connection there. Pete. Pete didn't share his treat. Yes. Good. Yes. Okay. Very nice. And how about um, do the? Let's see. Which one do I want? Number three. Go ahead and do number three for me. Stop by my house tonight. Very good connections. Okay, number four. His sister is so nice. Okay, so that is that example of the same sound. Um, and we're just saying that sound once. All right, how about number seven? I feel like going running. Mm -hmm, so a little bit more connection. Going running. I feel like going running. Exactly. Okay. So that's that's a great transition from one sound to the next. I really like that. Okay. Let's see. Anybody else want to? Thank you, Alina. Welcome. Okay. Anybody else want to try a little bit of this? Okay. One thing. Uh, so BJ. All right, BJ. How are you? Let's see. Can I hear you there? Go ahead and say something. Hmm. Um, so I'm not hearing you, BJ. Let's see if that. Uh, make sure your microphone is connected there. Okay. Let's see. Um. Well, I'm gonna come back to you. I'm gonna keep your your uh, microphone unmuted. So that uh, when you do, if you do kind of figure out how to get that microphone going, then I'll, uh, I'll be able to hear you, okay? All right, let's see. Okay, so one thing I wanted to go, with, oh, there you are. You there, BJ? Yep. Okay, good, let me, yep, I can. So let me get back to that page. Okay, so I wanna hear some of these connections for you. First of all, where are you from? I'm from Pakistan. Oh, awesome. Okay, Pakistan. Oh yeah, BJ. How are you? I <laughs> I know who you are though. Okay, so let's let's hear a little bit of this. I want to come. I want to come. Good. He's had enough food. He had enough food. Good. I want some more. I want some more. Good. Okay, I'm going to come down to these consonant uh, consonants that share the pronunciation. So I've been drinking coffee. She should I say that? Yeah, go ahead and say it for me. I have I have been drinking coffee. Okay, so the the I've been so that's a contraction here, and you'll you'll learn more about that in the bonus lessons. I've been drinking coffee. I've been drinking coffee. Yep, there you go. Pete didn't share his treat. Pete didn't share his treat. Yep, that sounds wonderful. How about stop by my house tonight? 
stop by my house tonight. Good. Okay, so those connections are really important as you make sure that, that uh, you're kind of flowing from one word to the next, making sure that you're getting the ending sound, you're getting mouth, your mouth in the position of the ending sound, and then leading into the next word. Um, that's where, really where it creates that fluency of just um, moving, moving very fluently from one, sound, one word to the next. Um, so BJ, I know you're just at the beginning of the course, so you'll be learning, you'll be getting more into this um, later on in the next uh, few weeks. So, um, mm -hmm. so you'll, you'll learn more about that, okay? Good to have you here. Okay. All right. Okay, so, um, so I want you to really kind of practice that as you're going through. If, if deleting your ending sound is, is a big problem for you, um, then linking is going to be a, a very important thing to to work on and to um, to practice, especially with the T's and the D sound. Um, so pay close attention to that. And all of that has to do with this consonant to consonant part B rule of sharing that position. So let me go back to the Vicky's question. I like that. I like that. So like like that. I like that there is there is a little bit of reduction that happens because if you're she's asking about that K they don't really seem to pronounce that as much um, but K and TH don't have the same position so there there are some situations in um, in just native speakers where they're, they're kind of relaxing things it's um, more of a reduced pronunciation on some things so I like that like that so what happens is, although she's not hearing it, um, that K in that in that sound, it's still there. I like that. I like that. Um, it's just very subtle. And what's happening is that um, is that that K sound. It's getting in position. It's you're producing that, um, but they're they're concentrating more on getting to that next word. So I like that. I like that. Um, so the, the, the biggest rule to remember with linking is you always still have to get your mouth in the position of the ending sound, but you might not always release it fully, or it might just be a very small, subtle sound um, in it, okay? So in words like what, what, my mouth is getting into that position for the T sound, what, I'm not, I might not be releasing it, but my mouth is getting to that T sound. And what happens with T's and D's at the end of the word is that sometimes there gets that unaspirated um, sound. So aspirated just means breathing. So um, breathing is releasing that air. T, t, d, d. There's that air release there. And what a lot of na native English speakers do is they just might not fully release that T or D at the end of the sound. So I found that thing, I found that thing, when she's talking about that D sound, this does, this does um, follow our rules of the same position. I found that, I found that thing. So it's in the position, D and TH are in the same position, so they're going to share that pronunciation. Um, and, but the D is going to get in position, so it's not, I found, I found, I found, I found that, sorry, I found that. No, we're going to get the D in position. I found that, I found that. Okay, so there are a lot of um, kind of variations um, with native English speakers. Um, I think that as you, as you practice connecting words together, um, that's going to really help that fluency. It's going to really help you um, just sound as natural and fluent. Um, with things like the what, um, native English speakers might drop that T sound. I don't think it sounds unnatural to produce the T. Like if you said what, I don't think that's um, any less natural than saying what and dropping that off. Um, so there are there are a lot of variations between what native English speakers are going to say, but if you follow the rules that are outlined um, in the course, follow those linking rules and connecting those sounds together, um, you're going to find that probably 80-90% of the way you're speaking 
is going to be correct. It's going to be, you know, the way people are doing it. There might be then that 10 to 20 percent that you just have to listen and have to see what are native English speakers doing and um, how can I do that? And what happens through this course is that your ear gets tuned to the different sounds. It gets tuned. You, your awareness is brought to your pronunciation, the way things sound, the way that you're um, you're using that rhythm and those sounds. And um, you'll be so much more aware of what how other people are saying things and why and understand why they're saying it the way that they say it. Um, and that's the that's the fun part about this program is just that awareness and that understanding. And then it brings a lot of um, uh, it brings a lot of um, confidence as you go through the course because you're you you're able to say, hey, I understand English pronunciation. I understand the American accent. I understand why they're doing it. I still might need to practice and and. Um, you know, do all the repetition and the practice to make sure I'm using it in all situations, but I understand what has to happen. And what I like hearing from my students is when they're saying, I just keep correcting myself, I'm hearing myself and I just keep correcting myself. Um, and that's good because then it means that you're improving, you're getting, you're getting more comfortable with what, what it's supposed to sound like and, um, and, then, and then moving on from there. Um, the other thing that I love hearing is that um, some of my students will say, oh, I was in this situation and I've mispronounced a word and someone said, what? Or they looked confused or they, they you know, you could t she, they could tell that they couldn't understand it. And they were able to think about that word and think, what did I do to mispronounce that word? Oh, I know. I know I have a problem with, you know, these long A sounds and that word has a long A sound. And so... Um, I know how to correct that. Um, so, for example, in that situation, it was uh, I have, had a student just said he was in a restaurant and he asked for braid. Um, can I have some more braid? Um, and braid with a long A is something you do with your hair. You know, you braid your hair. Um, and he was wanting bread. And so he, you know, he heard braid. He, you know, when he when he said braid and he knew that they were confused, he thought about, OK, how did I just pronounce that? And then he thought, oh, braid, bread, bread. That's a short E sound, not a long A sound. OK, now I need to um, I can I know how to say it differently. Bread. OK, so that's that's the big um, that's the that's the big trick here is it gives you the power to know exactly what you need to do, how you need to do it. And um, it does take a lot of practice on your part to really be able to use everything, but the tools are here for you. All right, so uh, so that's that's what I have today for um, for the this webinar. Um, just remember that it's you know step by step. This is a learning process. You'll you'll grow just in, step by step um, as you go through this course. There's um, it's set up in such a way that it just builds off of each other. So as long as you're staying with the course, you're doing doing the homework, you're doing um, all that you need to do to kind of build up those sounds and, and practice that rhythm, you'll be able to get there. Um, and as you go through, what I, what I really love about this is that um, as we go through, I want more interaction. That's why I'm trying to get this Facebook group together and um, and do these practice with me webinars. I want to know what it is that you need help on and give you that help um, so that you can be as successful as possible through this process. So there's probably a lot of questions you might have in terms of, well, I'm only on week one, but how do I do, you know, how do I get the rhythm or how do I get this? Uh, be patient because it all will come. It's um, step by step and we go through a lot of it. If by week six and seven, you're like, uh, I'm, I don't really get this, I, we haven't covered this, then definitely, um, I, I, wanna, I would definitely wanna know about that. Um, and, and along the way, just, just keep in touch and we'll, we'll uh, make sure that you're successful. Okay, so thank you so much for coming to this webinar today. Um, please contact me if you have any other questions. I'm gonna stay and just answer, um, you know, I can answer some individual questions. Um, if you have a question, want to raise your hand there, I'll stay in uh, just for a little bit longer. 
Um, but thank you so much for coming. I really appreciate um, you being here and your involvement in the in in this class. So thanks. Okay, BJ, I do want to answer your question. Um, you can't speak on high voice. So uh, BJ, go ahead and go ahead and I'm going to unmute you. So BJ, are you there? You there? Yep. Okay. When you say I, I can't speak on high voice, what does that? What do you mean by that? Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, I'm sorry. Here's my computer. Okay, so when I say that I can't speak on high volume, it means that it means that I cannot. Like in my language, we speak like very calmly, uh -huh. normally. But in English, you have to speak like this. You have to shout like I don't know how can I shout like that, but you have to speak very like that. No, so okay. So so BJ, you don't have to shout. You don't have to shout. I I tend to be a very loud talker, <laughs> so I might be shouting and I might be speaking too loud. Um, I I I probably take I probably speak too loud in most situations because I'm used to presenting and teaching to groups. <laughs> Um, and speaking, and I, I have the tendency to need to be very clear in my pronunciation because of my profession. Um, but I think that the way that you normally speak um, is going to be just loud enough. If you're speaking to a group of people, you'll want to make sure you project your voice a little bit more. Um, but I think that your calm voice, that is that would be just fine. Um, and I think it has more to do with just making sure the sounds are correct, the rhythm is correct, um, than it is to speak too loud. Okay. So I think, I think Americans tend to be loud, speak, speak a little too loudly. <laughs> we, we tend to be yeah. a little, a little, a little too loud. So I think that it's best for you not to imitate that too much. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah, actually, I have uh, I have a friend. Actually, my friend's mom. She speaks on a very high volume, even though she's speaking normally. She she feels normal. She's an American, so she speaks very high, and I am I'm like freaking out. Like, how is she speaking very high? Like, <laughs> even she's speaking very calmly. I don't know what does American do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think that's just a funny little cultural thing for for us. There's. Um, there's a lot to that, but but I think that you your the volume of your voice just do what's most comfortable for you. I think that when I in the first week I talk about speaking up a little bit, and I think that is mostly just for those who tend to um, just be really itty bitty quiet you know quiet speakers or what I find is a lot of my students if they're unsure about how they're how to pronounce words then they start to speak very quietly. Um, and so I, there's a balance there between speaking too loud. You don't want to speak too loud and you need to speak loud enough for people to hear you. Um, but I think that just from listening to you, BJ, I think that your normal talking voice is going to be just fine. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, any other questions for me before we end here? That's all from me. Okay, good. I'm glad you're here. That's, uh, that's going to be a fun process for you to go through this program. All right, so I'm going to, uh, if there's no other questions, um, then I'll go ahead and, and end this webinar. But thank you so much for coming. And um, I'll be posting when the next webinar will be. And I might, I think I'm going to try doing it in the evenings. I've had some. Um, feedback kind of asking for more of an evening webinar time. So we're going to try that out and see how many we can get on the call and how many we can help here. So um, get on that Facebook page and we'll, we'll uh, answer questions and, and help you out there too. All right. Thank you for coming and have a wonderful, wonderful weekend.